Hey everyone, and welcome back to another CTF Reddit video. This is Pwn, Do You Still Feel Lucky? as part of TBTL CTF 2023. Uh, there were six CTFs last weekend, and this was one of them. Uh, it's kind of a bummer when all the CTFs are stacked on each other like that, um, because the CTF was really fun for the Pwn challenges I did, um, but I didn't really see that many people playing it. Um, and it's just because there's six of them in one weekend, uh, which is just, it's too much. Um, but anyways, I want to talk about one of the Pwn challenges. Uh, I really like this challenge. I wasn't really planning on making videos for the CTF. I was just playing to have fun. Uh, but this challenge was a nice little puzzle challenge. Uh, and at first it seems impossible, uh, but once you know the trick, it's very easy. And mm, I just, I love those types of challenges. Uh, so for this challenge, we were given source code, a binary, and a netcat port. And the, the challenge is very simple. Uh, at the very start, it's going to read in the flag. And then you're going to supply a guess flag, and it'll tell you how many characters match. Uh, most likely, the flag is going to be around 64 characters. Um, it kind of it doesn't say it, but you can kind of guess that the flag is going to be long. Um, and that's pretty much it. And depending on how many characters match, you get a couple of different uh, responses. So when I first saw this, two different things went through my head. First, this seems like a misc challenge, not a pwn challenge, um, but that's wrong. And second, um, it doesn't really seem possible even if it was a misc challenge. Uh, they tell you if you ha get half of the flag correct, um, but if the flag is 60 characters, you only know the start and the back, so maybe you know like five or six characters. There's no way that you would get half of them correct. So uh, just based off that, this doesn't seem possible. Um, but then as I started playing with it, uh, I had noticed something absolutely crazy. Um, and if you want to try and guess uh, what it is and why it's called Do You Still Feel Lucky? Um, you probably already saw the YouTube video title, so you already know what it is. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, just very cool. Um, so I'm going to say what the solution is now. Um, when you insert a guess or when you submit a guess, you get to say the guess length and it's going to call malloc on that. Cool. And so malloc is going to return a chunk off of the heap. And uh, it turns out that f gets under the hood also uses malloc. So when the read flag command is called at the start of the program, it's going to do the f open flag, do an f gets. It's going to create a malloc 64 byte buffer to read in the flag. It's then going to set the flag value to this global variable flag here, and then it's going to free that malloc chunk. So on the heap, there is a chunk that is freed that contains the flag. Down here, when we malloc, if we do the correct guess length, technically it's going to be um, in the forest or whatever of the heap. So I think any guess length you give it will actually grab that chunk. Um, but we can malloc, and it'll actually return a chunk that already has the flag in it. So when we guess, really we're just going to write up to uh, the very end of whatever our guess length is. So if we say like guess length of 5, um, it'll compare... Uh, the five characters we give it, and then a new line or an end of line, uh, depending on what you supply to the program, and then the rest of the flag is going to match. So if you just run this binary, um, most of the time it says almost or getting there, uh, which doesn't make any sense even if you submit a very small flag, but that's because you're using the same chunk that already contained the flag. Um, and that's why the problem is called do you still feel lucky because you're just reusing that heap chunk that already has the flag. Um, and to kind of see what this looks like, uh, let's make this nice and big. I'm going to clear. So let's do GDB chow. Make this a little bit bigger. Um, let's break on puts and let's run. Cool. So the puts call is, the very first puts call is here. This happens after we've read in the flag. So uh, let me make this just a little bit smaller. Uh, it'd be nice to have registers. Hopefully this is visible. Um, if we do a VM map, oops, sorry, not a VM map, this heap. Uh, we don't actually see anything on the heap right now. That's because the chunk has already been freed, and it's actually down here in, as part of the top chunk. So instead, if we were to examine a string uh, just a little bit past this, so I'm going to say examine string plus 16, um, so it's really the next line, we just can't see it, uh, you'll see there's the flag. Um, this is the real flag. I just copied it over to a local flag file. Um, but that means it, it exists there on the chunk. So then if we were going to, let's say, break on malloc, let's continue. Uh, it's going to, oh, uh, let's delete the break on puts. Delete zero, delete one, continue. Uh, our guess of 64. Now we're in malloc. Let's finish malloc. Let's viz heap so we can see what heap chunk was just created. That's going to read in our flag guess. And we can see this is the new heap chunk right here. <laughs> so when we call malloc, this is the chunk that's returned, and it already has the flag for us. Um, that's just crazy. So then uh, let's uh, break on free, I guess. Break on free. Um, and then let's continue. So now we're entering our guess of the flag. Let's just say flag guess. 
Um, let's hit enter. It's going to call free. Before it frees it, let's take a look at our heap chunk. And we can see this is what it did. So it clobbered the existing flag, but we can see we have our flag guess right here. Uh, so uh, once you see this, the, the rest of the exploitation is pretty easy. Um, basically, you're just going to do a character brute force. Uh, you get a different error message if you're off by two or if you're off by a half. Um, and so using those, you can just iterate through the last character and eventually you'll brute force character by character the entire flag. Um, but, you know, like once you see the trick, it's obvious, but it's just not something I would have guessed at first. Like, I would not have guessed that F gets is going to call malloc and um, put the flag on the heat for us. Um, so anyways, th this is the solve script. Um, like I said, nothing too exciting. We're just going to connect remotely. We're going to give it a flag. And then from there, we're just going to iterate character by character. And depending on the error message we get back, um, there's two different error messages. There's one, it's almost if your flag is off by two characters. And there's one for getting there if it's off by like half a character or something like that. Or sorry, half the characters. Um, just using those two error messages, you can figure out which character is the right character. And you just, like I said, you just get brute force character by character. Um, so we can run it. Uh, remote is still live. So... Uh, we'll remote, run it on the remote server. Um, I'm not going to run it for too long, but we can see we're starting with TBTL, and then I freeze whenever I get a character that matches. So TBTL5 is the first character. And once you brute force the entire flag, it says sometimes you do indeed get lucky. And so you can see we, we're starting to write out sometimes. But um, yeah, very fun challenge. Uh, something I'll definitely have to look forward in the future. And uh, thanks. I'll see you at the next CTF. Cheers.